Houston, Texas. The St. Louis Cardinals played a night game at home last night. Got to bed about 4 a.m., but they have been playing well. Their magic number is four. They have a 10-game lead. Here as the Astros try to shed their seven-game losing streak for the second time in 09. They've lost seven in a row. They come back home where their record is 42 and 33. For the final homestand of the year, three with the Cardinals, an off day Thursday, and three with Cincinnati over the weekend. Here's the starting lineup now for Tony La Russa's Redbirds. We're coming off a three and six homestand. It's Julio Lugo leading off at second base. The former Astro followed by Brendan Ryan, the shortstop. Albert Pujols bats third. But then the cleanup man is Matt Holliday, who did very well again this year against Houston. This is Ryan Ludwig in right field. Mark DeRosa at third base. Jason LaRue does the catching tonight. Skip Schumacher is making his third start of the season. In center field, it's Kyle Loesch pitching. Wandy Rodriguez works for the Astros tonight, having a marvelous season. 13 and 10, 270, 70 ERAs, made 30 starts, finished one of them. That 158 home ERA, best in all of Major League Baseball. Defensively, the Astros with the familiar look. Lee Bourne and Pence cover left, center, and right infield of Blum Tejada, Matsui, and Berkman. Humberto Quintero behind the plate for Wandy. Wandy ready to throw his first pitch to Julio Lugo. Former Astro fouls it for strike one. Lugo's played well since joining the Redbirds. 294 is his average as the Cardinal. And two homers, 10 runs batted in, included in that production. He's played shortstop and second base. Has a 366 on base average. Pokes that one outside the first base line. No balls, two strikes. Lugo coming up as a shortstop through the Astros system. He had been with the Boston Red Sox, and the Cardinals have found him very useful in giving the other guys up the middle a day off. Schumacher, in this case, moves from second base to center field to get Lugo in the lineup against the lefty, Rodriguez. Yeah, it really provides some nice uh, depth for the Cardinals because Lugo can play the outfield as well, but being able to slot him in there at short or second. Especially with a lefty on the mound. He's hit lefties well over the course of his career. Well, that, you know, Ankeel, a left handed hitter. Rasmus, a left handed hitter. So they get the night off tonight, and Schumacher uh, moves to the outfield. Here's Wandy's numbers against the Redbirds this year. A losing record of 1 and 2, but he's pitched very well against them. Four starts, 225, his ERA. He's been shut out in both of those losses. Fly ball left field. It was not hit well. Carlos Lee waiting. One out. Might have been broken bat, in fact. And Wandy, who has lost three to nothing in St. Louis to Kyle Loesch and one to nothing in St. Louis to Adam Wainwright, beat Todd Wellemeyer here. And his other start was a no decision. He came out with a hamstring strain. Brendan Ryan, the shortstop with a 291 average. Has three homers, 34 runs batted in, and he too has sizzled against the Astros, 368. Wandy delivers strike one. Jeff Kellogg is the home plate umpire tonight. Wandy's coming off a three to one loss at Cincinnati Monday, in which he allowed two runs in six innings. Oh, and two as Ryan lunges at the curve. Cardinals played five one run games in their nine game homestand and last night lost an extra innings by three to the Cubs. One and two they have a long road trip here starting tonight a nine game trip with two off days they go to Colorado and Cincinnati. After this stop. Foul back still a one ball two strike count with Albert Pujols on deck. Well, the Cardinals 87 and 63, not a matter of if, but when they clinch this division from the Astros' point of view. I hope it doesn't happen here in Houston. Tony La Russa with a comfortable lead, but uh, home field advantage at stake. Right now, the Dodgers with the best record in the National League. Yes, he did. Ryan struck out on the curve. Two out for Wandy. Curveball has been baffling National League hitters all year long. Ryan thought he checked, but from that angle, like he went. Albert Pujols is atop the leaderboard in home runs with 47 in the National League. Todd for the lead and runs batted in with 128, 447 on base average, and also the major league leader in those departments. Looks at ball one. 
Pujols has scored 119 times to lead the National League as well. It's a one ball one strike count to Albert. He leads their club in pretty much everything. Average home runs RBI on base slugging. He's even tied for the stolen base lead. Fly ball to right field Hunter Pence backing. And that one is bouncing and staying in play. It's a double for Pujols his 15th. His 41st of the year rather. Well, Albert has not had success against Wandy, but a good swing here will show you the confrontation. First pitch high fastball up and away. And then throws one right through there. Albert taking all the way. One more time with the heater. This one off the outside edge, but up a little bit. And Pujols just drives it into the alley in right center, which makes him so good. So balanced in the batter's box. And uh, able to hit the ball to all fields with power. He's aboard for Matt Holliday. Holiday smacks one into left field. Pujols is being sent home by Jose Okendo. Carlos Lee with a throw to the plate. And he scores to make it one to nothing St. Louis on the RBI hit by Holiday. 50th run batted in for a holiday with the Redbirds. So makes the Cardinals such a better team. The depth in the lineup with the additions. Holiday, DeRosa, and Lugo used to be you were so concerned with Albert. You felt like if you neutralize him, you had a pretty good chance of beating the Redbirds. That's no longer the case. They've got a lot of weapons. That's 104 runs batted in overall, including his Oakland stats. Ryan Ludwig looks at ball one. 269 for Ludwig. 20 homers, 89 driven in. And a good season. 333 against Houston. Controversial ninth inning for the Cardinals last night when Ludwig thought he had reached first base safely on an attempted double play by the Cubs. The Cardinals were celebrating. Then they found out that the second base umpire had called Holiday for sliding out of the baseline to go after the Cubs shortstop, Ryan Terrio, and that ruled a double play. You know what that ruling is? When, he, when Holiday goes out like that? No. It's a Roman Holiday. A <laughs> Roman Holiday. It's good. There's the rim shot, Jason. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. Bump to right field. That liner goes foul. Two and two to Ludwig. Bit of a hanger there. Wandy obviously very comfortable on this mound. Most pitchers are a little bit vulnerable in the first inning until they get their bearings. This, this pitch bad enough where it didn't hurt him. If it settles down about bell tie, that's the one that really gets smoked. Mark DeRosa's on deck. Cardinals are seventh in the National League and run scored. And that's fouled away. The Redbirds have gone 38 and 21 since the All Star break. The road they played well, 10 games over 500 at 41 and 31. And they are 7 and 5 against the Astros in the season series. Curveball blocked by Quintero. And now the count runs full on Ludwig. It was a 20 and 6 month of August that really told the story in the National League Central. Redbirds going 20 and 6 while the other teams in the division just kind of treading water or backsliding significantly. They entered July with a half game lead and they started August with a 10 and a half game lead. Runner going, it's grounded up the middle. Tejada can't stop it from going into center field. Holiday going first to third on the Ludwig single. Three straight two out hits for the Redbirds. Bring up Mark DeRosa. It's a ball there. If, if there's a man on second, Miggy's going to leave his feet to make sure he knocks it down and prevent a run from scoring. But with a man on first base, he's going to try to stay upright as long as possible because if he gloves it, he's got a chance to make a little backhanded flip to get a forced play. At the end of the day, he just wasn't going to get there anyway. 
Now the Cardinals knocking on the door for more than the one run they've scored. Mark DeRosa is the batter. DeRosa looks at it and it's ball one to a 229 hitter with eight homers, 22 runs batted in since he joined the Cardinals in a trade with the Indians. And he hurt his wrist shortly after arriving in St. Louis. That will require surgery at the end of this season. Smack to right field. Hunter Pence backing on this deep drive. That one hits the base of the wall, stays in play. Holiday scoring. Ludwig is coming home. Relay from Matsui to Quintero. He didn't make the tag. And he threw to third and got the out there. Looked as if he could have tagged Ludwig. But the third out is registered at third base. And the Cardinals are able to put a big crooked number on the board. Three runs on four hits here in the first inning. Three to nothing St. Louis. First lineup as the skipper begins with Michael Bourne at center field. It's Miguel Tejada batting second tonight at shortstop. Lance Berkman hitting third at first base. Carlos Lee in left field. Jeff Plum third base. Hunter Pence right field. Caswell Matsui second base. Humberto Quintero catcher. Wandy Rodriguez pitcher. Ready? Kyle Loesch goes to the mound for the Redbirds tonight. Check out these numbers at home. He's been pretty solid. Five and three, 375 on the road. 0 oh and five, 642. Michael Bourne takes strength one. Consider that Wandy had the lowest home ERA in all of baseball, and Loesch is winless on the road. You would have to like the Astros' chances, but boom, a three spot for the Redbirds in the top. In tight, it's a one ball, one strike count on Michael. Had a rough day yesterday, striking out all four times at Milwaukee. This one goes to left field toward the line. Holiday over. One out. Loesch has won five and lost eight, fighting through an injury to his forearm from a batted ball back in May. Skipped his last start. The Cardinals moved him back to give him more time with that right forearm situation. After going three and a third innings in his previous start, September 12th against Atlanta. Yeah, so a, a bumpy ride this year for Kyle Loesch as he makes his 20th start, five and eight, 483 ERA. Well, 13 home runs. In 102 thirds innings, a 15 game winner last year for the Cardinals. Miguel Tejada, an eight game hitting streak, takes strike. When on his game, Loesch, uh, good breaking stuff, very unpredictable. Throw so off speed pitches and any count. It's one and one. Loesch signed a four year contract after that 15 win season JD talked about, 30 years old, from Chico, California. Tejada smacks one to left field, flips the bat. Home run, Miguel Tejada. And the Astros get a run back quickly. It's three to one on his 12th home ball of the year, extending his hitting streak to nine games. 
the book on Tahana is you can get him out in with hard stuff. That looks like what Loesch was trying to do. And Miggy quick enough to get to this one. Yeah, they're trying to come in on him with a fastball. And Miggy able to get the head out in front just enough to knock it out of here. Now three to one ball game. And it's Lance Berkman batting. Lance takes ball one with 22 homers, 73 runs batted in. He's hitting 270. The Astros' last 10 home runs have been solo shots. Bush missing. And the count runs to two balls, no strikes. The Astros went seven and three on their last home stand. It's 3 and 0, and then went into that rough 0 and 6 road trip. Yeah, that wasn't a whole lot of fun, was it? Not a bit. The weather was nice. <laughs> Three balls, one strike. Well, Dave Duncan has watched a very good pitching staff with a 3.64 ERA, third best in the league. He gets a lot of credit for turning pitchers around when they come to St. Louis. Smacked on a line, and the third baseman, DeRosa, was way over there to make the catch. Perfect position. Yeah, whoever uh, positioned DeRosa puts a star on their cap. And they hit that one right on the screws. Uh, story in the uh, most recent issue of uh, Sports Illustrated on the Redbirds, Dave Duncan, all the influence he's had in the pitching staff. It's a good article. He's the only pitching coach in the majors right now who was not a pitcher. He was a catcher. Carlos Lee, with a fly ball, right center field. Ludwig over. And in the first inning, the Tejada long ball makes it three to one, Redbird. Did today and change managers. It's not the way you set out to do it, but it is uh, something that does happen in baseball when you want to change the tone and establish something for next year. Can you tell us a little bit more about how the thing unfolded, Ed? Yeah, you know, we, we talked a lot internally about uh, about whether to make a change or not and when to make it, and it just felt like if we had done something at the end of the season, it would have been awkward from the standpoint of traveling back from from New York, and and realistically, when we came to the decision to make the change, it made sense to do it now. Dave Clark has experience in the minor leagues. Uh, Hunter Pence really endorsed him from their time together at Corpus Christi. Said uh, he comes to the ballpark pumped up every night, expecting to succeed. 
And uh, it just seemed to me, Ed, and maybe you won't want to speak to this, things were a little down around this ball club the last few weeks. Well, you know, when you, I think we've played 32 or 33 games since the second half, since the All-Star break where we scored three or fewer runs, so you're going to look flat and, and, uh, and listless uh, when you go through that type of, uh, of struggle that we've gone through. But, you know, I, I, I do think that Clarkie brings a good energy to our ball club. Uh, he's got a great relationship with uh, with not only Hunter but Michael Bourne. Certainly has has embraced uh, embraced Dave as, as somebody a go to guy for him, and and I think that uh, the Dave's level of energy will play well here over the next 13 games, and uh, and hopefully we'll play well as a team at the, at the same time and, and finish on a high note. You were on the road trip with the Astros. Uh, did that enable you to gain any insights that you might not have otherwise been able to gain? I, I didn't, no, I just thought it was important to be with the club with uh, with some of these decisions that we have to make, not only from the standpoint of, of field personnel, but also you know, we've, got, uh, we've got 10 or 11 free agents on the club and and uh, you know a lot of decisions to make. So I think to be there firsthand and, and, uh, and show that we have a vested interest in the process was important. How about the... Uh the timing of uh, when you when you hire the permanent guy, whether it's Dave Clark or, or somebody else, how important is it to, to, when you make that decision that, uh, when you're considering signing free agents and, and things of that nature? Well, Jim, I think the the primary thing that we have to do is make sure we're making the right decision uh, for uh, for that role. Uh, it, it would be great if we could have us have somebody in place when when the free agent process starts, so on and so forth. But realistically, I, I think uh, I think what we need to do is focus on. On somebody who can bring the right elements down there once the season begins, actually when spring training begins, you know, make sure that the club is prepared coming out of spring training to go from the very first day to the very last day of the season, and, and uh, so I think that's more the the focus than worrying about one more voice in the room when it comes to trades or free agent discussions. Now Loesch around the bunt after the singles by Larue and Schumacher, and there's a throw over first. As far as the tone of the team and what you would like to see from now. Uh, to the remainder of the year, the end of the year. Well, obviously, you'd like to see a win every night, but uh, everybody wants to see energy and uh, hustling approach and that kind of thing. But beyond that, what are you looking for, Ed? I, I want to see a team that plays with pride. Uh, I, I spoke to the players before the press conference today after we had made the change. And I said, you know, we've got a lot of guys in here who are free agents and, and for selfish reasons can play a certain way either to impress us about coming back or going someplace else. We've got arbitration eligible players, we've got young guys. So there are selfish reasons why to play the game a certain way, but I would much prefer that we're playing it based on, on the pride of wearing the uniform and putting your best foot forward and finishing on a high note and, uh, and, and making sure that, that people see that we're, we're in this thing right to the end. We made a change with the manager today, I said, uh, but we didn't ask Dennis Laboria, our equipment guy, to pass out the boxes to begin packing your stuff up. Uh, that has to take place the day after the season. And between now and then, we've got games that we need to go out there and put our best foot forward in and, and, uh, and come away with, the, with, with as many wins and finish on the high note if we can. Does it, does it matter at all to you in the next couple of weeks how much you see of Manziel or Chris Johnson or any of the young guys? No, Jim, I think it's important. You know, we, we've, we've ridden Miguel Dehad and, and Jeff Blum here for, uh, you know, for an extended period of time. And, and, and for various reasons, I think it's important to give those guys the, the ability to go out there and play as much as they can down the stretch. Again, we want to win as many games as we can. But, you know, we're talking about, in, in the case of Manziel and Johnson, they play positions that, that are currently occupied by, by two guys who I think are real leaders on our club. You know, Miguel uh, obviously has been saluted in that fashion a lot, and, and Jeff in his own way uh, fits the same bill for us. And, and realistically, I think they need, we need to, to show them the respect that they deserve. They're both free agents at the end of the year. We don't know whether they're going to be back here or someplace else. Uh, but these guys have gone out there, banged up all season long, and put their best foot forward. We'll figure out the Johnsons and Manzellas, you know, in spring training and beyond. But uh, for right now, let's go ahead and, and pay proper respect to the veteran guys. And uh, obviously, um, we're not prepared to divulge names, but when we start thinking about a potential next manager, is, is there a profile? Is there a type of guy you look for, or a certain personality type? Or I, I, I've, got, I've got certain certain attributes in mind. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say, we can only. Check off a few block boxes with you. Uh, you know, <laughs> appreciate the campaign literature that you put in the mail today, but uh, you know, they're, 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 yeah, I've got some, some specific ideas in mind. But as far as it's got to be a guy with major league experience, uh, it's got to be a guy with with extensive minor league managerial experience. I think we need to sit down and and uh, and do our homework and try to make the right decisions. I don't think you necessarily make your decision based on what you get in an interview, as, as Tal Smith points out. Everybody interviews yeah. well. Um, but, but, you know, we need to put a body of work together or, or study everybody's body of work and try to make sure that, 
when we make this very, very important decision that we're making the right one, hopefully for an extended period of time. Well, the baseball season so long, it goes through so many cycles. As you pointed out, and there's a fly ball near the right field line. Hunter Pence coming over. Good running catch. Here's the tag by both runners and the throw to the plate. And another run comes home to make it four to one. Things do change, Ed, uh, as you pointed out today. Well, you know, what we wanted to do was to, to, to give our, ourselves every opportunity for this thing to get turned around. Uh, it, it wasn't that long ago. I know it seems like eons ago. We were game out. Of, we were game out. Yeah, yeah well, when these guys were in town last time, we swept yeah. them and we're looking pretty good. And then, and then you turn around, and, and we haven't won a series since uh, on the road since the uh, San Diego series in late June, early July. And as I pointed out, we're, we're like seven and, and twenty-four, seven and twenty-five in games where we've scored three or fewer runs since the All-Star break. You know, you know the, those are those are things you, you want. We want to see them turn around. We want to see the energy, that the types of things that happened the second half of last season when. When Coop played a real big part in, in in the way that we played to have the best record the second half of the season a year ago, but it just it just wasn't happening, and, and we felt that it would it necessitated trying to make a change uh, and and get things straightened out going forward. As far as the free agent process goes, as you pointed out, it's nice to have a manager in place so those free agent players may be attracted to him. Yeah, that's that 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 is one aspect of it, but. Again, I don't think that you can necessarily create artificial deadlines to make a major important decision, and, and this certainly is a major and important decision for the franchise. If all those things were to fall into place, that's great. And, and realistically, that the free agent filing period is, is it begins immediately following the World Series. Last 15 days, you can't even start doing anything until that period ends. You know, that's we're, we're talking about the all of October and. Uh, and part of November to uh, to try to uh, make sure that we're making the right selection. So I don't think it's unrealistic to think that we'll have somebody in place. But again, if it takes a little bit longer than that to make the absolute right decision, then we're going to take all the time that uh, that we need to make that type of decision. I'm seeing in my mind's eye, I'm putting myself on the couch at home, thinking, what would I ask Ed Wade right now? And, and I guess when you fire a guy and you let it be known that you're going to do a search. I mean, your phone just start ringing off the hook. The guys, hey, Ed, I'd love that job. And <laughs> well, we talked about that. It's maybe Bob, Bobby Heck and I were just talking about that over in the box. You know, what's the first cold call going to yeah. be? And, and I, I made a guess. I'm certainly not going to say it out loud. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll be. Uh, and they'll, agents. And they'll, yeah, a, agents will call on behalf of their clients. And, and, uh, and, and fans will weigh in with their choices. And, and uh, you know, it, it becomes somewhat of a popularity contest to some extent. But, but again, this, this job is so important, particularly with where we're going to be next year with, with probably a lot more young players on our team uh, and still the veteran core group here. I think it's going to take uh, it, it, it's going to have to be the right guy. And, uh, and and I don't think we're going to be swayed by the first phone call or the multiples of phone calls or. Or, uh, or leaflets in the mail or anything else that's, that may come down the way. Do, do you seek input from, from any of the players? I mean, will you go to a Berkman and, and bounce any ideas off him? I'm or? sure. I, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm a big believer that, that all information is good information. The more information we can get, different perspectives on things. Uh, I plan to talk to all the coaches here before the end of the season, not, not about their job status because we've already done that. We've told them until we get a manager in place, we're not going to be able to tell them what the, that status is. But I think they can provide some some in, input from the standpoint of perspective of what they're seeing on the field and, and what their feelings are with regard to where we are right now as a team. Uh, because I've got great respect for every one of our coaches, and, and I think they can bring a different perspective. Yes, players can as well. I've had to, had a couple of meetings with Lance Berkman since I, since I got this opportunity a couple of years ago and, and some other players. And, and uh, you know, get candid assessments, weigh their information, know, knowing that they're, they're viewing it through their prism and, and everybody's going to have their own take on things, but uh, again, all information is good information. And if it takes us to the uh, takes us to the right spot at the end of the day, then that's uh, that, that's all well and good. With your expense, extensive experience in baseball, you met a lot of talented people. Are those people that you would rely on or start to think about now? Or are you just saying, now I'm going to open up all my horizons for anybody who makes them? Well, I've, I've got I've got some specific people that I'll, you know, I'll pick some brains uh, along the way here about different things. You know, there, there are some there are some uh, some GMs out there who have gone through uh, this process here in the not too distant past. Uh, you know, the last time I did this was hiring Charlie Manuel back in uh, in Philadelphia in in, uh, in 2004. 
and uh, you know, a lot a lot has happened since then and, and there's been some good candidates there I'm sure that uh, in talking to some of these clubs that have gone through it there probably are some guys out there that some teams would have liked to have hired uh, but for whatever reason uh, didn't but they still may be a good fit for us so I'd like to have that information if I can get it. Cardinals get two runs we'll be back with Ed Wade in just a moment. Loesch and Wade has joined us to talk about the events of the day and the future of the Astros ball club and uh, Jeff is one of those names you mentioned a guy who's possibly headed for free agency you talked about that window uh, Ed uh, after the World Series of two weeks that uh, clubs have that exclusive opportunity to talk with their own players will you use that to talk with uh, perhaps Jeff and Miguel Tejada and anybody else who might be in that status. We'll, we'll probably begin some probing conversations here in the next couple of days. Uh, I, I, I wanted to uh, to make the the managerial shift and uh, and then go back and, and try to, to to visit with a couple of our guys who we think uh, are, are natural fits for us going forward. So we'll probably initiate some of those conversations. Some may move quickly and some may not. Uh, you know we again we're, we're going to have to balance our overall uh, our, our overall payroll picture uh, next year and and as much as we'd like to have multiples of these guys back we're going to have to to pick and choose a little bit I, I think Jeff Jeff has done an outstanding job for us in the role that he's had this year and I think that there's a uh, there's an equally significant role for him uh, down the road a year from now uh, but again we haven't had any of those discussions and uh, and and certainly hope to try to have those those types of talks at least preliminarily before the season ends. Jeff Keppinger has been a good addition to this ball club. Michael Bourne has had a terrific year. So there are certainly positives to ponder. There's the toss to the pitcher Loach from Pujols out number one. And uh, a lot of times, you know, clubs lost seven in a row. People dwell on the negative sometimes, but you can't really afford to do that. You have to sit back at the end of the season, evaluate the total picture. Big picture guy, right? Well, you know, from the from the end of the national anthem until the end of the game, it, it's sort of all about the game. But uh, I know in the in the three days in Milwaukee, I had all kinds of handwritten notes over there, uh, left to my own devices. Ricky Ricky Bennett uh, went back home from Cincinnati, so I was there by myself. Had a chance to write down rosters and and wish lists and and uh, you know all kinds of different structures and and. Uh, you know, once the season ends, we'll be able to begin to apply some of those things. But you know, it, it, it's a case you'd like to say that you know that that particular game is your sole focus, but you've got to be a little bit broader than that. And uh, not the, not only think about this year, but uh, but the impact of our decisions going down the road. You know, do we offer salary arbitration to some of our potential free agents, uh, and in a quest to possibly maybe not to sign them, but to uh, to get draft picks back. And so there, there, there's all types of dynamics. That will be at play once the season ends, and we want to be as prepared as we possibly can be you know, when uh, when those opportunities present themselves. 
Hunter with his good September numbers, finishing in strong fashion this year. And he strikes out here for out number two. But as you've looked at the young players in the system, Ed, and you've had a chance to visit all the minor league clubs along the way, do you like what you've seen this year? Yeah, I, I, I particularly uh, I particularly like what what's coming, you know, from sort of the far horizon at this point in time. I think I think we've had two good drafts here. Uh, the outfielders at uh, at Lancaster uh, in the California League, uh, all all project as, as prospects. Certainly can't walk past what Kobe Clemens has done this year at, at Lancaster. Uh, the young pitching at Lexington, uh, you know, selfishly, I'm sure the people in Lancaster wouldn't be happy about it, but we may jump some of those pitchers from Lexington to Corpus Christi next year and combine them with the uh, with the outfield core from uh, from Lancaster and think we're going to have a pretty good club there. Uh, you know, Giovanni Meyer, uh, the number one pick out of this year's draft class, played very, very well. Several other kids have played well for us, and we're beginning to see the Latin presence take on a uh, take on a greater profile in the organization. We're very happy to see what I saw in the Gulf Coast Rookie League this year, and you know we've got the uh, we've got the Instructional League uh, starting up uh, here. Uh, uh, you know, actually, get, uh, just started up. We had to bring Al Padrique up to coach third base from that group, and uh, you know so hopefully uh, hopefully it's a crop that will get here soon. But we're going to have to be patient and wait for them to uh, to, to reach the. Cardinals five, Astros one. It's Matt Holiday leading it off, and there's strike one for Wandy Rodriguez. Holiday with the RBI single in the first inning, scored two holes as the Cardinals put together four consecutive hits with two outs in that frame. We got three more hits off Wandy, and a couple more runs in the second inning. No balls, two strikes. Wandy has lost eight times in his career to St. Louis. That's the most losses he has against any other club. Obviously, if the Astros are to win this game, they're going to have to have their hitting shoes on tonight. You know, it would be nice if the hitters could come back and, and bail Wandy out. He's been so good this year. So I got number two for him. Let's go to Bart. The Bill fans that come to the Astros game Saturday get a two for one deal. They get a Hispanic Street Festival and an Astros game. The festival will be held from 2.30 to 5.30 on Avenidas de las Americas, adjacent to Minute Maid Park. This year's festival features Astros player appearances and live music from Latin Grammy winning duo Jesse and Joy. And head over to the ballpark to catch the Astros and the Reds at 6.05. First 10,000 fans will get a Pudge Rodriguez bobblehead courtesy of Dayhill. For more information, go to Astros.com. Thank you, Bart. Ryan Ludwig looks at a couple of pitches. Two balls, no strikes to Ludwig. Single to center field in the first inning. Fly ball heads for the center fielder, Michael Bourne. Two down. So 
Mark DeRosa will come up. DeRosa had the big two run double in the first, but then he was thrown out trying to stretch that at third base. So Hunter Pence picked up yet another outfield assist, his 14th of the year, to take over the National League lead on that play, which went from nine to four to two to five. DeRosa looks at ball one. Troy Gloss had been back in the mix a little bit at third base, but now he's injured again. And uh, was not on the field before the game. He might have arrived late from St. Louis if he did arrive at all. Cardinals now taking a long look at their postseason roster, of course. There's a fly ball headed for the seats. Oh, just missed the light tower. A long drive for a DeRosa homer, number nine of the year, giving him a three RBI game here. DeRosa not hitting for a high average since joining the Cardinals, but he is providing some pop. Got a two old triple fastball right there. Only just uh, obviously a little bit out of sorts here tonight. Location not where it typically has been. Trying to go down and away with a heater and a fastball rides right back over the heart of the plate and says hit me. He did a long way. Wow. At 13 homers for the tribe. So that gives him 22 in the majors this year. DeRosa makes it six to one Redbirds. That's his fifth home run against the Astros. Jason LaRue taking ball one. Yadier Molina getting a night off after that. Night game last night going extra innings in St. Louis. One ball, one strike. Cardinals, many of their players getting to bed about 4 a.m. after the night game. Nonetheless, well, they turned in early then. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> but they have that extra burst of energy that comes from a magic number of four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, come to the ballpark with a little extra bounce in your step when you're about to. Claim a championship. Tap the shortstop. They hot up. Goes out of the roof. In the third inning, DeRosa goes deep and it's six to one, Cardinal. Hole leader with 18, and it's Kyle McClellan and Jason Mott with 15. Trevor Miller has 13 holes. Just as these middle relievers keep their team in the game, you can too. Just for men, hair color. You got to throw a little love at those middle relievers. Yeah, that's right. A lot to do with a winning team. Kyle Loesch has retired five in a row after the Tejada first inning homer. Now Humberto Quintero leads off the home third. 232, three homers, 12 runs batted in. There's strike one for Loesch. 
Cardinals have gotten more innings from their starting pitchers than any other team in the majors. Fly ball right field. Ludwig heads back. On a warning track, one out. Their starters have 932 innings. Our Jack in the Box standings. We'll look at the major league RBI leaders for the past decade. A Rod, Pujols, Manny, Carlos Delgado, who's been injured all year, and Miguel Tejada is fifth. Pujols just continues to excel. Wandy Rodriguez with seven hits and 59 at bats. Has a 119 average. Strike one for Kyle Loesch. Loesch is five and five in his career against the Astros with a 2.86 earned run average. Curveball goes in the dirt. It's one and one. Loesch has had two very good starts against the Astros this season. Shut them out. In St. Louis, about a week into the season, beating Wandy three to nothing. Grounded to DeRosa. And he's stringing outs together in this one. Well, Bill, the Astros take on the Reds in the final home game of the 2009 season this Sunday at 105. Get to the game early as the first 10,000 fans will receive a 2019 poster courtesy of Academy Sports and Outdoors. Sunday is also Fan Appreciation Day, and a great prize will be given away every inning courtesy of our Astros partners. Don't forget that kids are free all season in partnership with Minute Maid. For a list of prizes and to get your tickets, of course, go to Astros.com. Bill. Thank you, Bart. There is a big hook for strike one to Michael Bourne. Michael's taken a pretty good beating with all the running and sliding he's done this year. He said he's held up all right, though. Now the base dealers about this time of year, their legs must really be hurting. No balls, two strikes, especially a center fielder with all the extra running that he does for that position. Yeah, you don't find many old, beefy center fielders. <laughs> Michael's hitting 284 in September. Trying to get in there with a heater. He did. Yeah, he certainly did. So one hopper to Lugo. And Loesch hits his spot on that one and has retired eight in a row to lead six to one after three. Houston Astros baseball on Fox Sports Houston is brought to you by Dodd, by Geico, and by Whataburger. Tony Rodriguez throws strike one to Skip Schumacher, leading off the fourth inning. We'll be going to the Bart in just a moment. Schumacher took a big cut at that one. He singled and scored in the second inning. Cardinals lead at six to one. They've out hit the Astros eight to one. 
Cardinals getting a long ball from Mark DeRosa and a two run double from him. Wandy dropped down a little bit there and got a strikeout as we go to Bart. Yeah, Bill, down here in the press box with Greg Lucas manning the Twitter page as always. Uh, Greg, what are they saying about the managerial change? We're saying a lot of things, a, a number of them, and we have probably hundreds, uh, more than a hundred or two on Facebook. Uh, they're approving it. Many of them are saying they're people higher up that also are responsible for this. And, uh, you know, what's going to be next? So far, no one is speculating or trying to guess, but it's uh, quite a bit of response to this move. I do want to plug, though, the... Uh, the Facebook blog that I do at uh, uh, Fox Sports Houston, Facebook Fox Sports Houston, because there's more to Cecil Cooper than just a manager. As you know, he's a really nice man, and, and we hate to see that happen to good guys, even though maybe the change had to be made. And I had some comments about that. Yeah, you want to check that out at our Facebook page. And, uh, indeed, I second that. Cooper, uh, a great guy, uh, very professional, great to work with. Brownie, back to you. Yes, he was. We can echo those sentiments. And also, uh, isn't Greg going to be doing this blogging all off-season long, Bart? Oh yeah, yeah. I'll be. No, actually, I will. I'll be writing that column uh, all off-season long, delving into some other sports too when I get a chance to see some of them. Very good. Well, there you go. I didn't want to speak for Greg. <laughs> he's committed now. Yeah, he's now. <laughs> for Lucas Files. <laughs> Lucas Files. Strikeout number four for Wandy. Against Schumacher and Loesch. Now it's Lugo. Well, uh, ugly start to this one for Wandy. Cardinals scoring in each of the first three innings. Um, we need to post a zero here. He's got a 3 2 1 0, and then, then we're just going to lift off and fly away. <laughs> okay. But uh, you know, just trying to salvage something out of this one if he can hang in there and give the Astros a couple more scoreless innings, give them a fighting chance to come back. Well, there's strike one to Lugo. Lugo with a sack fly in the second inning, 0 for 1. Yesterday, Felipe Paulino gave up three in the first, but stayed in for six innings, allowing only one more run after the first inning. Bounce slowly. Blum cuts over in front of Tejada. Throws and safe at first. Tim Timmons made an unpopular call for these fans. Fitty fitty. Yeah, it looks safe. Affleck wants us to answer some trivia. Affleck. Thomas Howard. Oh no, that was the pregame show. Thomas trivia. Howard. Name the Cardinals three 20 game winners this decade. Chris Carpenter. Two more though. Brendan Ryan takes ball one. He's one for two with an RBI. Uh, how about um, Matt Morris? Okay. My problem is the years all run together. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just as likely to guess John Tudor. Two balls, no strikes. Tudor did it, but not this decade, right? No, John, John Tudor, a crafty lefty for the Redbirds back in the 80s. Foul back. Right. We got a man right here. Make a play. No, we back. Two balls, one strike for Wandy. Wandy, in 11 of his previous 14 starts, had allowed one run or no runs. Different story tonight 23 pitches in the first, 23 more in the second, 72 total in this game. He had that one real ugly one where he allowed 10. Uh, for the most part, has been brilliant. Rolled out to second. Matsui over to Berkman. No runs a hit. One man left. Six to one Redbirds.
20. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was this decade or the 90s. I thought maybe he had done it. Carpenter more, so, uh, well, two and a half out of three. Well, you got in two. actually under the wire yeah, before that. It, it didn't go out over the airwave, so it was kind no. of. But people heard you. Miguel Tejada has the only hit. It was a home run for the Astros through the first three against Kyle Loesch. Loesch throwing ball one to Miggy. Loesch now has set down eight in a row since the Tejada long ball to left. It's a two ball no strike count. Loesch was hit by a pitch in a game by the Royals Ron Mayhay on the forearm. That's what began the problems for him. The flexor tendon in the forearm. It's two and one. Then he strained a groin running the bases. This is his 20th start of the year. And he was hit again by Joe Blanton of the Phillies. And the non pitching elbow. So those aren't pitcher injuries. Those are position player injuries. <laughs> Getting drilled by pitches, straining a groin, running the bases. <laughs> well, in that game against the Phillies, then he allowed a two-run over by Jason Worth and a grand slam by Ryan Howard in the fifth inning. So the Astros would love to duplicate that kind of a pattern here, trailing six to one. One hopper to shortstop. Ryan plays deep at short. High throw out at first. Pujols came down on first base. Now Ryan, a little bit of a funky throwing motion, got under this throw and, and it sailed on him. He kind of dropped his arm angle down. I don't know if he got a little bit of a barking shoulder or not. Pujols up and Mickey kind of breaking it down there and that allowed Pujols to get back to the bag before he got there. He sure was. He slowed down. Coming up later in our Dodge Grab Live feature, Wesley Wright talks about his motto for life. Stay tuned for that. Lance Berkman hit a bullet to third. It was caught by Mark DeRosa. There's strike one. Had worked the count to 3-1. Really hit the ball hard, but infielders have shifted around, and DeRosa was in a perfect spot to catch it. I've got a new motto for life. What's that? I saw it in a T-shirt in Milwaukee, some college kid. Okay. Uh, I'm paraphrasing here, but something to the effect of, if at first you don't succeed, Deny you are ever really trying. <laughs> kind of like that. Bouncer past the mound up the middle. Here's the jump throw by Lugo. Safe at first. Lugo unable to stop the big Puma from beating out another infield hit. His 55th of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Speed kills. Well, the Puma hit a bullet for an out last time, so. A little justice here as he gets an infield hit. Lugo with a, a nice effort, but Lance. Hustling down the line, sniffing that hit. I smell it. I smell a hit. Come on! It's that haircut. He made it a half a step faster with that haircut. <laughs> hit number two for the Astros. Nine straight have been set down by Loesch. Now it's Carlos Lee. 12 game hitting streak for Carlos. It bends back from strike one. Carlos saying on Astros Live, the players have to make sure they give full effort. Al Pedrique is the new third base coach on an interim basis. Grander to third. Rosa to second. Lugo to first. Around the horn, double play. No runs, one hit. The Cardinals get their 160th double play and maintain their 6 to 1 lead.
For a one hitter beat the Braves one zip. The only offense for the Braves, a Dale Murphy infield hit. The only other base runner, a walk to Bruce Benedict. Gerald Young drove in the game's only run in the eighth inning. Bob Nepper. Where is he now? Nepper, a 14 game winner in 1988. Won 15 games in 84, 15 more in 85, 17 in that 86 season with a 3.14 ERA. 146 wins in his career. Good, good pitcher. Albert Pujols up the middle. Miguel Tejada. One out. That's the winningest left hander in club history, isn't he? Yeah. On these 150. Here's our uh, Ford League leaders brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Oh, look at that. Yep, is 193. Mike Hampton, 76. You are number three. There's Wandy fourth and Dave Roberts fifth. Texas four dealers. Showing the all-time lefty win leaders. Fix that a little bit. Yeah, you're trying to adjust your numbers? Yeah, you're going to put a one in front of mine. A strike one to Holiday. Holiday with an RBI single and two trips. Uh, J.D. enjoying a groundswell of support from the fans, nominating him to be the Astros' next skipper. Al Smith delivered a piece of mail that he had been sent on your behalf, JD. Would you be open to that suggestion? <laughs> or were you already disqualified earlier by the GM? I think I, yeah, I don't think I met the. Uh, I think the. I think the GM said he wanted. Well, I thought he said major league. Yeah. Managerial experience. He said major league experience and minor league managerial oh, okay. experience. So that kind of. Yeah, that kind of disqualifies you. From rules me out. I'll just continue to manage from up here. It's a lot easier from up here. <laughs> just fire on guys and second guess. <laughs> Three and one for Wandy. Wandy leads the majors in home game ERA before tonight. Popped up. Ted Lilly right behind him, so this one takes a hit on his home ERA. It's out number two. And let's go to Bart. Hey, Brown, out here in the Crawford box, as you recall, early in the game when Miguel Tejada hit that moon ball for a home run, we found the guy that made the catch. What's your name? Leo Rodriguez. Nice job. Thank you very much, sir. Describe the play for us. Oh, it was coming right at me, and I, I had no choice but the, my glove up, and there it was, and it was it was perfect. It, it was, was a spectacular catch, wasn't it? It was a great catch, one in a million. But you know what? I, I, I can do that every day if I if – I, so you just had the opportunity. I put the opportunity to it, you know, but God bless the Astros and God bless Houston, you know. And, uh, wow. Well, for those good feelings and something to carry the ball around in, you get the Let's blue the progressive play. bag. Oh. Thank you very Pretty much, sir. Exactly. I appreciate ball. it. And uh, thank you, uh, my kids at home. I love you very much. Macy, my wife, thank you for everybody for all your help. One of the most enthusiastic progressive yeah. fans we've had all year, Brody. <laughs> Back yeah. to you. And he's, uh, yeah, he, he's got the voice to uh, do more than. There you go, Leo. Yeah. I can replay show that he did not catch that ball. Well, that's okay. He just ended up there. Wound up with it. Wanda gets a strikeout. That's number five. And it's 61.
look at your Astros on and off the field. Latest team news, features about your favorite players' lives away from baseball, and the week's hottest action on the diamond. It's all on Astros Insider, Thursday, 6 p.m., only on Fox Sports Houston. Toward the gap in right center off the bat of Jeff Blum. It bounces, it rolls to the wall. Blum heads for second with his 13th two base hit. Hit number three for the Astros. That gets it started here in the home fifth, trailing six to one. Now well, a nice come from behind win for Dave Clark's first ever game. Managing a big league team sure would be a lot of fun. This could be the start. Chip away here. Put a runner two on the board in the fifth. See what happens. Lead off double. Got to get this one home. Blum aboard for Hunter Pence, who struck out in the second inning. Matsui's on deck. Astros have hit 243 against Cardinal pitching. Cardinals magic number four. So any combination of Cardinal wins, Cubs losses, totaling four, and they claim the division. The Cubs have a seven to one lead over the Brewers in Milwaukee. Tom Gorzolani pitching for Chicago against Braden Looper. That bit of news uh, Cubs winning generally not embraced around here but that's a good thing. We don't want to see the Cardinals jumping up and down. Spilling champagne in Steve Perry's clubhouse. <laughs> Hunter going and it's no balls two strikes. Derek Lee hit his 34th homer. Ramos Ramirez added number 14. Mike Cameron for the Brewers hit his 20th. Line to second. Lugo right there. Tough luck for Hunter. He put a nice short stroke on that one, but hit it at the second sacker. One out. Two of the Chicago Cubs have suspended Milton Bradley for the remainder of the season for comments he made in a radio interview or a newspaper article. A newspaper article, yeah. apparently. Now the, uh, the union is contemplating the grievance. Okay. I can understand the Cubs' frustration with Milton's act all summer long, but I don't know if. If they're justified in suspending him for popping off in the paper, he made a remark uh, to the effect of, "Well, now you can see why they haven't won in a hundred years." Yeah, I mean it's a dumb thing to say. But I'm not so sure they're on solid grounds there in suspending him. Well, probably not because we do have freedom of speech in this country. But uh, he did pull himself out of a game recently, and uh, the trainer didn't go out. He didn't call anybody out. He, was, he had reached base. He just walked off the field. So he's been doing some strange things for a while now. But they signed him to a three year deal and there were those who said well he's a good DH but good luck trying to play him out of position because he does get hurt quite frequently. He's been mostly healthy this year. He's just been a bad hitter and a bad character. <laughs> well and they knew he had some baggage when they brought him over and. Uh, under the bright lights of that market, it was exposed. Pretty good player, though, if he gets it, you know, if he can get it smoothed out. Yeah, they only owe him 21 million for the next two years. Think anybody would be biting on that? Two balls and a strike. Ooh. I don't know. That's, that's how general managers get fired. You know, <laughs> decisions like that. Either way, because if you pass on him, he turns out to. Put a big number somewhere. You're going. Wow, we could add him. Yeah. Chad Peronto warming up. The Astros might be pinch hitting for Wandy in this inning. That's so he looks at the off-speed pitch, and that runs the count to three and one for Kyle Loesch. So the Cardinals' postseason rotation would certainly include Chris Carpenter and Adam Wainwright. Then what do you think? Pinero. Okay. And I don't know if they're going to need a fourth, but if they do, I guess it's between Kyle Loesch and John Smoltz. It's three and two for Loesch. Pinero is 14 and 11 with a 3.31 ERA. Having an excellent year. And he will pitch tomorrow against Jorman Bizzardo at 7.05 here. Two coming to Matt Suey with Blum at second and one out of the fifth inning. And that is ball four. Now the Astros have a little opening here. Quintero coming up. First walk of the night for Loesch. 
Yeah, if ever there, there was a time to challenge it and be willing to throw a fastball right over the heart of the plate, there it was with Matsui up there, six to one ball game. Perhaps that's what Loesch was trying to do, just didn't make his pitch. What's on tap with the Astros? Comes courtesy of Bud Light. Pinero and Bizarro tomorrow night. Coverage begins at 6:30 with Astros live as the Astros face the 14-game winner. And Norman Bizarro tries to reach the win column for the first time as an Astro. He's 0-1. He's been in seven games, three as a starter. Quintero the single in the left. Blum is being sent home. Here's a throw from Holiday, and it's not in time. The run. Scores and the ball gets away, but no advance. Backed up by Loesch. As Blum goes in to make it six to two now. It's an RBI single for Quintero. And Matsui goes to second. Well, Al Patricki, Patricke forced into duty as the third base coach now with Dave Clark moving to the manager's position. Now the Astros field coordinator. Brought in, put in uniform, and a good send here. Bang, bang, play at home if LaRue is able to hang on. Oh, the ball hit Jeff in the back. Mm -hmm. And therein lies the problem for the Redbirds. Go. Go. Ball right in the middle of his back as he slid home with run number two. Way to go, Al. You're one for one. Now Aaron Boone is the pinch hitter for Wandy Rodriguez. Aaron taking strike one used sparingly by the Astros. He has seven at bats looking for his first Houston hit. He is 0 for 4 as a pinch hitter 0 for 7 overall. He had one start at first base in Chicago. He gets it here. This could be a great time for his first hit as an Astro. Michael Bourne's on deck. His dad's a former major league manager. Currently employed by the Washington Nationals. Foul back. No balls, two strikes. Hire Bob Boone, Brian? Well, I would have to look into it. But that's uh, what takes so much time looking into all the good candidates who are qualified. Make Aaron the bench coach. Like Brett, the hitting coach, have a whole boom staff. Yeah. And Bob did the interview here back in the mid 90s. That's a strikeout. Out number two for Loesch. And his second strikeout as well. Monty Rodriguez, five innings allowed, nine hits, and six runs. Loesch taking a little off that breaking ball. Pitching Aaron out in front. He had no walks and five strikeouts. Michael Bourne is 0 for 2. Fly ball to left and a grounder to second. And that one goes foul for strike one. He's seen a lot of breaking balls in recent weeks. That's the book on Michael now. Feel like he can handle the fastball and, and, and be effective hitting it the other way. So he's seeing a lot of off-speed breaking pitches. Okay, Hot is on deck. DeRosa in tight at third. One and one. The Braves, who are nine games over 500. Are playing at New York against the Mets tonight. Braves leading at 11 to 3 in the middle of the eighth inning. Derek Lowe with the first five. Pat Mitch gave up eight runs and one and a third for the Mets. One ball, two strikes. Chipper Jones at his 17th homer, a three run shot. Matt Dye is number 12, and it's Garrett Anderson earlier with his 13th. Chipper has had an injury riddled season. The Astros have scored 35 runs in 12 games against the Redbirds coming into this game tonight. Cardinals with that excellent pitching staff have kept them down. Adam Wayne writes an 18 game winner. Chris Carpenter's won 16. 
It's two and two. The Astros are missing both of them in this series. That's good timing. Yeah, it is. Wednesday night, it's Bud Norris versus John Smoltz at 7.05. And Bourne strikes out in the fifth inning for the Astros after the third strikeout for Motions. One run scoring on two hits, two man left, six to two Cardinals. Um, that's kind of the model I live by and it's been that way my whole life. If, if you believe it, then it can happen. Well, it might be that he's believing in being a starting pitcher for next year. He'll go to winter ball and start there. Now Chad Peranto comes in after going two and one at triple A round rock with a one point three nine ERA. He was with the Astros earlier this year in July and made two appearances. Very nice numbers down at uh, Round Rock, 194 batting average against a buck 39 ERA. Usually a sinker slider pitcher. There was a slider to Mark DeRosa for strike one. So Pronto back. We now have our pulling guards with Pronto and Fulcino coming out of that pen. <laughs> Pronto came back to the Astros on Wednesday when his contract was purchased. It's a one ball one strike count. That's when Billy Sadler had some uh, scapula problems and had to be placed on the disabled list. Smack to left field. That'll get out. That'll hit the light tower just below the top of the wall and ricocheted down there it looked like for a DeRosa homer his second of the night. That's a four RBI game for Mark DeRosa. Home run number 10 with the Cardinals and number 23 in the majors. He's got a pretty good chance of being player of the game. Double dinger dinger. I'm talking about Chad throwing sinking fastballs. This is a belt high sinker. Those usually don't work. And they're also obviously seeing the ball very well here tonight. Rattles it around like a pinball. There you go. Jason LaRue with strike one. Well, DeRosa gives the Cardinals their 153rd long ball. That's his fourth career multi home run game. And they lead 7 to 2 with 10 hits so far for St. Louis. Punch to right field on a line. Hunter Pence came up, <laughs> looked over at first. Lance Berkman wasn't going to first. Yeah, Lance wasn't going. LaRue was thinking about it, though. LaRue was chugging hard down the line. Lance won't give Hunter another outfield assist. 
Well, he can throw it away too. Now Skip Schumacher. He's one for two. A single and he scored a run in the second inning. Versatile player. He's moved to second base right before spring training, but he's also played some outfield this year. There's strike one. Now Marusa uh, has that option of going with a lefty hitting second baseman, Schumacher, or if he's playing center field tonight with Colby Rasmus resting. He can play Lugo as he is tonight against a left hander. It's one and one. Cardinals seem to be very well equipped for the postseason. Especially if Carpenter and Wainwright are dealing the way they have been this year. Good movement there for Peranto. Makes it a one ball, two strike count. Cy Young is going to be an interesting contest, including between two Cardinals. Good change up there from Toronto. Yeah, Wainwright, Carpenter, Lincecum. Any one of those guys could win that award without much of an argument. Fisted out to second and over Matsui into shallow right center for a looping single for Schumacher. He's two for three now. The uh, you know Lincecum may benefit from the uh, the Wainwright Carpenter. There may be a splitting of the votes there. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are having a hard time figuring out among the Cardinal guys who they like the most for that award. Toronto made a good pitch, jammed them, but just a little misfortune. Just looking at their numbers today, you see Toronto there ready to face Loesch. It was interesting because Carpenter has a 2.34 ERA compared to Wainwright's 2.59, but Wainwright has pitched 219 innings, Carpenter 180. And Wainwright has two more wins. He'll get two more starts. He still has a shot at 20 wins. And that'll get the voters' attention if he wins 20. It'll really help his chances. And Wainwright started last night, pitched well, but got a no decision. Jose Okendo. There you see the wins leaders De La Rosa, Josh Johnson, and Jason Marquis with 15. Berkman ready to creep again from first as Loesch goes into the bunting stance and misses that one. Now you can't discount those uh, Rocky guys because you've got to consider where they pitch when you when you think about the ERAs that they've posted. Now we talk a lot about on base plus slugging OPS and measuring offensive performance. So if, you, if you think about pitching as suppressing OPS, the best has been Lincecum, 567. 271 on base, 296 slugging average against him. That's just mm. that's ridiculous. Popped up. Berkman catches it. One out. Hey, Bill, time is running out for fans to get their tickets in Hunter's Lodge presented by Gallery Furniture. For just $30, you get a ticket and a Hunter Pence T-shirt with a new design each month. September features a camouflage Hunter Pence design. Plus, you're entered into a monthly drawing for an Astros gift. This package is available for every Astros home game. For more information, go to Astros.com. Bill? Thank you, Bart. Two men on, one out. Lugo's the batter. Lugo has a sack fly and an infield hit. Padres lead the Pirates 6 to 2, top of the eighth inning. Strike for Peranto. Sammy Hervasio is warming up in the bullpen. He's pitched in five of the last six games. Adrian Gonzalez hit his 39th homer of the season for the Padres. I believe he would be the first Padre to hit 40 if he reaches number 40. Chase Headley at his 12th. Nick Hundley number seven. For Pittsburgh, Garrett Jones belted number 20. How many can he have his MVP year out there? Yeah, he, yeah, he could have had more than that that year. No balls, two strikes. Well, let's take a look, see. Okay. Well, nonetheless, that uh, kind of number is really something that attracts attention for an Adrian Gonzalez on that club, on that ballpark. You know it. Swing and a miss. 
He was just hacking at that one. Lugo striking out. Really fooled by that Peranto pitch. Two outs. Uh, right on the button, Cammy had 40. Okay. In 1996, when he won the MVP, drove in 130 runs. Ryan had an RBI single to shortstop in the second inning. He's one for three. Shortstop again. This time Tejada over to Matsui for the force on Schumacher. One run, three hits, two left. Cardinals lead it seven to two. Time now for the Coors Light Freeze Cam, showing you a home run swing from Miguel Tejada back in the first inning on a 1-1 pitch from Kyle Loesch. Coors Light Freeze Cam brought to you by Frost Brood. Coors Light. That made it 3-1. Now it's 7-2 Cardinals. Astros come up with Tejada. Looking at ball one in the home sixth inning. Kyle Loesch bearing down, trying to earn win number six of the year. Tejada bounced out to short in the fourth. Followed by Berkman and Lee. Two balls, no strikes. Cardinals Triple A affiliate Memphis won the PCL championship and they're facing Durham in the Triple A World Series tomorrow night. One hopper, Ryan. One out. So they really haven't had any more September call ups because of that. Triple A World Series for Memphis. They might add a few. And they might be resting some players, of course, once they clinch. That's normal. And with such a comfortable lead, there was no sense of urgency to call up any uh, support from the minor leagues. If they were in a real tight race, I'm sure they would have brought up a couple extra guys. Lance Berkman lined to third and beat out a bouncing hit up the middle. And then Ryan very deep, almost directly behind second base. Brooklyn powers one to left center field. Schumacher on a long run, just looking at this one. That's a deep drive for Brooklyn and home run number 23. Seven to three game as Brooklyn unloads, giving him 74 runs batted in. Discovering that power stroke here in the last couple of weeks. Nice for him to finish on a high note. He's about to go into any kind of a deep funk. He's got a pretty solid perspective on things, but nonetheless, better to finish strong than to limp to the finish line. That's his fifth long ball in September.
See? He cut his hair. Not only is he faster, but he's stronger. <laughs> now seven to three ball game, and Carlos leaves the batter. Leaves all for two. Los delivers, and it's strike one. Now with Tejada and Berkman hitting the two home runs, the Astros have hit 11 straight solo homers. It's a one ball, one strike count. They are 13th in the league in belting long balls. We may be among the leaders in solo home runs off this keeps up. Yeah. Kind of a record that has to be approaching. It's a long run of solo homers. Two balls, one strike. Berkman hit it very well. In fact, scalded that line drive to third the first time up. The bouncer up the middle, so his swing has been in a pretty nice groove tonight. Two balls, two strikes. Lance a 312 career hitter against the Redbirds. That's his 37th career home run against Cardinal pitching. And Albert Pujols has hit 36 against Astros pitching neck and neck against each other's clubs. Lee's down on strikes. That's out number two. Fourth strikeout for Loesch. Jeff Blum, who doubled to the gap in right center in the fifth and scored one for two. Here's the pitch. What is that show? Have you seen that? I have not seen that show. That's a, oh, that's right. That's Jennifer Vogel's show. I forgot that was the title of it. There's strike one. And she goes behind the scenes to tell you a lot about Astros baseball. Follows the players out in the community, takes you into some areas where normally the TV cameras do not go. It's a one ball, one strike count. There were a lot of TV cameras out here today. Her, her last show was on the uh, they had a, a, a contest, a uh, food, uh, like a recipe contest up at the 5 7 grill for future ballpark food. Kind of like a food channel, you know, Iron Chef type thing. <laughs> that was last week's show. Okay. People were, were, were charged with coming up with a baseball friendly recipe, something that would be good to be served in the concession stand. And I think the winner, I think next year, it will be served at the ballpark. I think it's, it's the way that broke down. Nice. Foul tip, and it's two balls, two strikes to Jeff Blum. First of six games on this final homestand of the year for the Astros. Then they go to Philadelphia for four and New York for three to wrap up the season October 4th. Bounce to the right side, and Pujols is there. Lugo right behind him. Pujols tossing to Loesch for a 3 1 out, number three. The Berkman home run gets the Astros run number three, seven to three Redbirds after six.
about the managerial move made by the ball club today. There are a lot of decisions to be made. We had one decision to, to move on today, and that was relieving Coop of his role as his duties as manager of the Astros. We've got a lot of other decisions to make going forward, and we're going to use every, every amount of time to make sure we're evaluating candidates and making sure that what we're doing is not for cosmetic purposes, but for the betterment of the Houston Astros. Cardinals 7, Astros 3. That's why Dave Clark is the skipper tonight. Al Pedrique replaced Dave as the third base coach. With Dave taking over as interim manager, and he will be considered as the permanent manager after the season. Sammy Hervasio is a bullpen move Dave Clark has just made. Chad Peranto in one inning gave up three hits in a run, no walks, and a strikeout. Hervasio comes in with 21 major league games under his belt. Five of those on the recent six game road trip. He's been a very busy man. A lot of appearances, not a lot of pitches. Yesterday, just uh, four pitches in a third of an inning. The day before, faced a couple of hitters through five pitches. The day before that, two thirds of an inning. You ought to hang out with the regular center. He's pretty much an everyday player. Two balls, no strikes. This is his 12th September appearance in the 19th game this month. 48 pitches in the last seven days. No more than 18 in any one appearance. Jason Mott's warming up for the Redbirds with a count two and one now on Pools. A Thursday was an off day in Milwaukee, so Sammy probably went and found a rec league game somewhere to get a little work in. <laughs> yeah, he pitched Monday, Tuesday in Cincinnati, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday in Milwaukee. Rossio's averaging better than a strikeout per inning. It's three and one. He pitched twice in St. Louis in late August. He pitched well on both occasions. Sammy, 24 years old from the Dominican Republic. He's in a bit of a bind here. Three and one count on Albert Pujols. Three two now. Albert was headed for first. A little up. Uh, Front door slider that he throw, he's throwing. He's actually trying to go away with it, but, but it backs up on him. Another thinks it's going to be inside and just hangs on to the inside corner. Alberts walked 109 times this year. It's it hard and fair, and it kicks out toward the center fielder as Pujols heads for second base with a double. Second double of the night, 42nd of the year. When we talked about Albert's ability to hit the ball with power all over the field. His first double was in the right center field alley. This time he picks on a slider and rips it down the third baseline. The slider did not have a lot of movement. Well, he's just tied. Pablo Sandoval for the doubles lead in the National League. Albert leads in runs and homers. He's tied for the RBI lead coming into this game. Leads in total bases. Leads in on base and slugging. Leads in walks and extra base hits. Matt Holiday, one for three in RBI. Ball one to Holiday. Cardinals would like to re sign him. He's headed for free agency at the end of this season. They think they have some advantages. Number one, the team has done very well, and so has he since he joined them from Oakland. Line drive to right field, fielded on a bounce by Hunter Pence, who holds jogs to third on a sharp single by Holiday. And they feel that the fact that he was born in the Midwest in Oklahoma. Kind of plays into their hand to get him back in the Midwest as well. well they better be ready to open up that uh, checkbook <laughs> because there's not a lot of frontline free agents that are going to be out there on the market, and some of the big clubs are going to take a run at Holiday. A 
Well, there's some feeling that he might be one of those guys who uh, wouldn't be all that comfortable in the big markets of Boston, New York, Los Angeles, maybe, and that he might go more for being comfortable in the Midwest. But his agent, Scott Boris, typically has steered his clients to the biggest markets. Now Dewey Robinson out to the mound. First and third, nobody out for Ryan Ludwig. He's one for three. Ludwig singled in the three run Cardinal first inning and scored. Astros relievers have the fourth best ERA in the National League. And that's fouled away. Strike to Ludwig. Ludwig, quite a story himself. Really having that breakout time in St. Louis that he had been unable to put together. He's had injuries and various problems dogging him throughout his career until a couple of years ago. Berkman looks at the runner at third, throws to second. Now here's a throw to the plate, and the tag on Pujols in time for a double play. Very unusual double play. Two holes drew a look from Berkman. Then Berkman went to Tejada for the force play on Holiday. Tejada threw home for an unusual 3-6-2 double play. And when we were in St. Louis last time, or maybe it was uh, the time before, Tony LaRusso was quoted in the paper saying, Albert runs the bases like he's invisible sometimes and <laughs> trying to take advantage of the situation there. Berkman played it perfectly. Checked him, stopped Pujols' momentum, and then made the throw to second. At that point, Pujols probably should have just retreated to third base. They took a gamble, tried to score, and uh, you cannot execute any better than the Astros did right here. Perfect feed from Lance to Miggy, and then a good throw home. Mark DeRosa is having quite a night. Two homers and a two-run double. Ball one. Runner takes off for second. Here's the throw from Quintero and the quick tag from Matsui erases Ludwig trying to steal. Quintero's thrown out 42% this year and it's no runs, two hits, and nobody left as DeRosa swings through the pitch. Seven to Houston Astros baseball on Fox Sports Houston is brought to you by the Ford M150, by AT&T, by Jack Daniel, and by MD Anderson Cancer Center. Here's 
downtown Houston. It's a 7-3 lead for the Cardinals. Let's go to Bar Dennis. Well, Bill, we want to remind fans to visit the official online shop for the Astros at Astros.com. Browse the largest online selection of authentic team gear, including official caps, T-shirts, jerseys, collectibles, and a lot more. Get your team gear straight from the source. Shop the Astros.com shop. Thank you, Bart. Now Jason Mott takes over on the mound for the Redbirds. They lead it 7-3. Kyle Lotion, six innings, allowed the Astros five hits, three runs. There's Hunter Pence swinging for strike one. Loesch had one walk and four strikeouts. Mott is 4-4. Four and four. Well, Mott, uh, a rookie, hard thrower. Got up to a bit of a bumpy start. Lately, he's been pretty good. No balls, two strikes. Close to 76 pitches, 50 for strikes. With a quality start tonight, is qualified for win number six of the year. It would be his first road win this season. The Cardinals have gone 0 and 8 in his eight starts on the road. Well, it's going to be weird to see John Smoltz pitching here in a uniform other than the Atlanta Braves. <laughs> it really will be. Mott with 18 holds, uh, tied for the club lead. There's Smoltz, who will pitch here Wednesday night. 34,705 the paid attendance. Mott, another one of those guys. Seems like we've seen a bunch of them lately who started their careers as a position player. He was a catcher. Converted the pitcher in 2006. Nineteenth round draft choice in 03 from Port Huron, Michigan. Went to Iona College. Just pitched four times against the Astros this year. Has not allowed a run. I'm going to run up against the mighty Lemoyne Dolphins while at Iona. They might have. Ooh, that's what a cheese on the knees. Strikeout for Mott, number five for Cardinal pitching. Dallas Maverick coach Rick Carlisle to attendance tonight. What's he doing? He's, uh, he's here visiting Tony LaRusso. Okay. We got to know Tony through uh, mutual friend Bruce Hornsby. Is he the guy you were talking to on the field? Yeah, Rick and Rick goes, uh, we played high school basketball against each other in our, okay. in our little corner of the world there in northern New York. He played at a little tiny high school. You know, one of those deals where the foul line is the, you know, it's like half court, like the timeline. You, know, yeah. you shoot from half court and it's about an 18 footer. Mm -hmm. He got to know Tony through Hornsby, and Tony's been a very valuable resource for him over the years, kind of bouncing ideas on how to handle players and situations. Tony seems to collect coaches. He's a good buddies with uh, Parcells and Bobby Knight. Right. No balls, two strikes. Matt Suey. They slap fives down the line. Final week of Astros baseball here at Minute Maid Park for 0-9. Seems like a lot of these converted catchers. Um, there's Carlisle. From Ogdensburg, New York. Elizabeth High School. Mavericks good this year, Brandon? What do you know about that? I do. Strike him out. Second strikeout. Anyway, it seems like these catchers turn pitchers. There's nothing. Uh, Smooth about their deliveries. It's just rear back and let it fly. Well, you mentioned Smoltz and talked about Mott. Mott with that 4.92 ERA has had his struggles this season. Kyle McClellan's in the mix. Blake Hawksworth can be a setup guy. Quintero is one for two, but Maybe Smoltz is a setup guy for the playoffs. On through into center field. Quintero two for three tonight. Now Jeff Kepinger will be the pinch hitter. Batting for Sammy Hervasio. Hervasio in one inning. Allowed two hits, no runs. But no.
No walks, no strikeouts. All right, Sammy. Let's throw a little ice on that arm. Be ready to come out and get him again tomorrow. Wow. Gettinger 264 with seven homers has 27 driven in. He's had 277 at bats. As a pinch hitter, Jeff, five for ten with an RBI. He takes strike one. Capinger is four for 16, including a homer against the Cardinals. Two hopper to third. Perosa over to Pujols. In the seventh, no runs, one hit, one left. Cardinals seven, Astros three. Gets it in to Matsui. It throws to the plate. Quintero throwing back to third base for the out on DeRosa. DeRosa knocked in two with that double, and then he was thrown out for the third out of the inning. Seven to three Cardinals. They got that three run first, all coming with two outs off Wandy Rodriguez, who was tagged for nine hits and six runs in five innings. Now Wilton Lopez becomes pitcher number four for Dave Clark tonight. Wilton uh, back in there today worked yesterday four times he's pitched for the Astros this year no wins or losses a high ERA, but he's only worked seven and two thirds innings the Cardinals with seven runs uh, could have eight or nine without a couple of uh, mistakes on the bases. Lopez faces DeRosa DeRosa was at the plate when Ludwig was thrown out trying to steal. Quintero is now gunned down 9 of 20 this season, trying to steal. Grounded to Jeff Blum. One out here in the eighth inning. Hey. Got DeRose out. That's a major that story. Will so. Yeah. It was bronze medal for that one. 4 and 5, 473 ERA at the Corpus. He made 15 starts there. Five August starts had a 123 earned run average. He's the pitcher of the month at Corpus for that effort. Running a call up to the big leagues. It's a pretty good run on his two seam fastball. That was it right there. Be a good ground ball pitch for him. Jason LaRue taking it. He is two for three in this game tonight. Jason has not had much playing time this season. On appeal, he checked his swing there. Tim Timmons with a call that takes the count to one and one. Maru had only 84 at bats when this game started. 
Jason, 35 years old from Bull Verde. He was born in Houston, went to Dallas Baptist University. Fifth round pick of the Reds in 95. It's a two and one count. Jason's got to be a 10 year man by now, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. in a while. First year was 99. He had a portion of a year that year, a portion of 2000. So, in terms of service time, not quite. Roll back to the pitcher. Two down. Our game summary is brought to you by Ford and the Astros Texas Ford dealers showing you DeRosa. For three for four night, two homers, four runs batted in. Tejada got one run back on a first inning home run. Berkman a solo homer in the sixth. Juan Rodriguez allowing six earned runs. And that put the torch to his home ERA, which was 1.58 for the season coming into this one. Skip Schumacher is the batter. He's two for three. Strike for Lopez. The Astros have Bourne, Tejada, and Berkman do up in the last of the eighth inning. Cardinals have some bullpen action going. Brad Thompson's warming up. One and one. Cardinals trying to lower their magic number, which was four when the night began. Matsui can't stop it. It's on through into right center field. He was trying to slide and get up for the throw. But Schumacher gets hit number three of the night. And Caswell having a very nice year defensively. He may have actually overplayed that ball. Be surprised to see that have gone between his glove and his body. Looked like he was there. No, no, just didn't corral it. It's been a tough play with Schumacher, who runs well. Left handed hitter. Now Khalil Green is the pinch hitter for Jason Mott. Thompson in the bullpen fouling it for strike one. Green 206, six homers, 24 runs batted in with 165 at bats, is 5 for 27 as a pinch hitter, including a homer. And he would not seem to be a lock for the postseason Cardinal roster at this point. It's one and one. Green missed 27 games with social anxiety disorder. That was back in July. Lopez drills that one through the strike zone to make it a one and two count. And when the Cardinals got Mark DeRosa in that trade with Cleveland, that addressed their hole at third base. As Green had been one of those candidates to play third after injury to Troy Gloss. They tried some others there too. Two balls and two strikes. Cardinals have really made some nice adjustments to their roster as the season has moved on. General Manager John Mozalak with uh, that trade of DeRosa getting Holiday as well. Lugo. Smoltz. Bouncer to Tejada's right. Over the second to Matsui for the force on Schumacher. No runs, one hit, one left. Middle of the eighth inning, 7 3, Redbird.
to speed with the AT&T Rapid Rewind. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. Now Kyle McClellan comes out of the bullpen for St. Louis with a 7-3 lead, facing Michael Bourne in the bottom of the eighth inning. And there's ball one, his first pitch high. Bourne 0 for 3 tonight. McClellan, pitcher number three for the Redbirds. He's had a solid year, fitting into this eighth inning on many occasions for Tony La Russa. Born bunts and it goes foul. And McClellan, uh, his second year in the big leagues. Last year, a solid rookie season for the Redbirds. 61 appearances this season, 4 and 3, 287 ERA. He's done a good job of keeping the home runs down, just four of those, and a 223 batting average. So, a lot to like when you look at the numbers from McClellan. He's got the fastball curve slider and a change. Well, I'm 25 years old from Florissant, Missouri, a St. Louis suburb. It's two and two. He got a save in St. Louis against the Astros back in April. But then in late August, August 27th, he got a blown save. Coming in with a 3 2 lead in the eighth inning, gave up a Jeff Keppinger home run. Bourne strikes out, one out. Michael just kind of. Scuffling right now, punching out four times yesterday, 0 for 4 tonight. Strikeouts in his last two at bats. Tejada takes a practice swing. He ripped a homer in the first inning. He's grounded out twice to shortstop since then. Cubs are winning 8 to 2 at Milwaukee over the Brewers in the top of the seventh inning. Strike one to Tejada. So if the scores hold up the way they are now with St. Louis winning here and Chicago winning, Cardinals will lower their magic number by one. That number goes down by one every time they win and down by another every time the Cubs lose. Tom Gorzlani went five innings for the Cubs tonight. Braden Looper went four, giving up seven Ernie's. For Milwaukee. It's one and two. Not a whole lot of drama left in Major League Baseball. The Twins still with a shot at running down the Tigers. Tigers are idle tonight. The Twins playing in Chicago have a 5 0 lead in the sixth inning. So they could move to within two and a half of Detroit if they win that ball game. Twins are on a long road trip, but they will have another series at Detroit. So their goal now is to just stay within reach until they get there. Tejada strikes out. That's number two for McClellan. Dave Duncan, a very smart pitching coach, but I doubt that he tells Kyle McClellan, hey, throw that letter high slider. <laughs> the standings. The Red Sox have actually climbed within five games of the Yankees. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, not enough time to run them down, but Red Sox finishing strong here. Nine of their last ten. Lance Berkman's two for three. And there's a diving play by Lugo over to Pujols to get him for a one, two, three, eighth on a close play. Excellent effort by Lugo. Cardinals maintain their lead over the Astros, seven to three.
Cardinals seventh inning. Pujols a double. Holiday in single. First and third. It's a ground ball to Berkman. He goes to Tejada for one. Back to Quintero with a tag. Round number two on Pujols at the plate. I think the play there for Albert is, is just to go immediately. And if the Astros turn to 363 uh, or 361 double play, you score. And if nothing else, draw the throw home, sacrifice yourself so the Astros don't get the double play. He made the worst of all decisions, hesitating and then going. But great execution by the Astros. Here comes Hawk for the 61st time. He's got a win, four losses, 11 saves, and a 231 ERA. One guy who's not gotten a lot of work recently. Basio and Fulcino and some of the others have been very busy. Hawk pitched twice on the road trip Tuesday in Cincinnati and Friday in Milwaukee. Now Colby Rasmus is pinch hitting for Julio Lugo leading off the ninth inning. Rasmus usually plays center field bats down in the order. And lines to Tejada. That's one out for Hawkins on one pitch. Brendan Ryan has an RBI single in four trips. Redbirds closing in on win number 88 of the year. They're 43 and 28 within the division. Friday against the Brewers, 13 pitches for Hawkins, and those are his numbers. Strike to Ryan. Two holes on deck. It's one and one in the Astros ninth. Lee Blum and Pence are due to bat. Hawkins, another of those Astros players who could be headed for free agency. And the bullpen decisions facing Ed Wade and staff involve him and Jose Valverde regarding free agency. Two balls, one strike. Verdi's had a good year. Missed five weeks with an injury. Going healthy. He's throwing the ball well. Matsui watches Berkman backpedal and get underneath it. Two outs. After the game tonight, it's the MD Anderson post game show. Dave Clark's first game as Astros manager. We'll have post game comments from him, highlights from the final score, and a preview of Jorman Bizarro's start tomorrow night in game two of this series. Albert Pujols has a pair of doubles tonight, going two for four. Ball one to Pujols. Just a tremendous player. Many feel once again the best player in the National League. Pujols won his second MVP award last year. He's hit more homers than last year. He's driven in more runs than last year. A little bit higher slugging percentage for Albert than last year. Two balls, no strikes. Yeah, you have to work him hard in. You got to push back a little bit. He's so big and strong and has his hands right out over the inside corner, covers the outside part of the plate so well. You got to come hard up and in on him every now and then and, and hope you, you take away some of his conviction to go out there and get that down and away pitch. To Hopper Tejada. It's a 1 2 3 9 for Hawkins. Cardinals lead the Astros 7 to 3.
Ford at 150. By the Progressive Insurance Group. And by Bud Light Line. Seven to three, the Cardinals lead it. They got three in the first inning. And with Kyle Loesch on the mound, they have held their end of the bargain, kept the lead. Colby Rasmus is the center fielder. He pinch hit for Julio Lugo. Skip Schumacher has moved from center field to second base. Cardinals are set for the bottom of the ninth inning. And it's Carlos Lee batting. He's 0 for 3. Strike one for McClellan, who had a 1 2 3 eighth inning with two strikeouts. Carlos Lee's 12 game hitting streak on the line here. He took a walk. I hurt himself yeah. on that swing. He popped something in his wrist. Assistant athletic trainer Rex Jones is coming out. And Dave Clark is trailing. And he yelled. Yeah, obviously in pain there as he finishes his swing. Probably had to take one or two good hard swings before yeah. he steps back in there. I don't think he's going to learn a lot with that easy one. No. No, he's going to have to test it a little bit more than that to be sure that it will hold up if he swings at a pitch. That's going to be, let's see, well, he's staying in. Jeff Plum on deck. Hunter Pence to up third here in the Astros ninth inning. Cardinals record when they lead after eight is 76 and three. Good pitch there from McClellan. He's in front 0 and 2. Yeah, no percentage hacking at that one. Good sinker down bottom of the knees. Breaking pitch in the dirt makes it a one ball two strike count. Closer Ryan Franklin is third in the National League in saves with 37. He's had a fine, fine year. Had some struggles of late. He's been pretty dependable for the Redbirds. An All Star this year, Ryan Franklin. Caught by the third Sacker DeRosa on a line drive. One out. The other race of interest, that wild card race. Let's take a big first at our Texaco star performer of the game. Mark DeRosa. How about the night he had? Double home run, home run. His first three trips to the plate. Three out of four, two home runs, four driven in. Talked uh, about all the additions they've made, and he's been a real nice piece for the Cardinals. Jeff Blum looks at strike one. There's a double in three trips. Astros have been outscored 32 to 15 during their seven game losing streak trying to prevent an eight straight loss Plummer with a roller diving play by Schumacher throwing from a knee spectacular work by the guy who started in center field and moved to second base. Pretty play. Quickly to his knee, rotates the hips. Good solid throw. Had the right guy running. Two outs, and it's Hunter Pence batting. He's 0 for 3. Strike. Cardinals had lost their last six games here at Minute Maid Park, trying to put an end to that tonight. They are 38 and 43 in this ballpark. It's a one ball one strike count. Live ball to center Rasmus. And the Cardinals get closer to clinching their magic number drops to three with a seven to three win at Houston Kyle Loesch going to six and eight. 
McClellan getting the final six outs in this one. And Wandy Rodriguez, the loser, goes to 13 and 11. Stay tuned for the MD Anderson postgame show. It's coming up next.